Hello everybody, I am Ken White and uh, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to thank everybody for continuing to watch the videos and this next one is going to be in regards to the available options and uh, different settings that you can change on your Beofeng radio using Chirp software. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a pre-existing save file. Um, that way we don't have to go through and, and type a bunch of you know information out. So here's an existing template that I use currently. Um, so these are all my two meter frequencies. These are the call signs for the towers. Um, PL tones are located here. Um, this stuff we don't really worry about. I always leave that defaulted. Um, cross mode here is... Uh, let me see if I can remember what that means. I think that's in reference to your duplex, which whether you set it to a negative or a positive duplex for your offset here, I think that it changes the uh, cross mode, but I, I really don't usually mess with that stuff. It changes automatically. Uh, when you type in frequencies, uh, tone squelches, and offsets, the software kind of figures out the rest of the information, and, and these will change automatically for you. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and look at our settings tab and It's pretty self-explanatory. It's not too bad. So the first option that we have is the squelch level Which again is going to be how sensitive the receiver is to opening the squelch or closing it um, five on the bail fangs is pretty common um, depending on what area you live in, you might have to go all the way up to 9. Uh, if you live in like an apartment with a lot of Wi-Fi and wireless devices interfering, um, you might have to turn your squelch level up as Beofeng radios don't really have the best um, <coughs> uh, selectivity uh, when it comes to frequencies. Uh, the battery saver, I usually leave 1 to 3. That seems to be fine. I've got good battery life out of that. The back out, uh, backlight timer, the backlight timeout, there we go. Uh, it's how many seconds the backlight stays lit, five seconds for me. Again, I'm always battery conscious, and usually when I'm outdoors, I don't really need much backlight anyways, so five seconds is fine for me. Uh, the beep is the, uh, I believe the keypad beeps as you're pressing buttons. Uh, talk out timer, so the maximum length of time you can transmit before the radio is disabled. Uh, I usually go, I mean, I usually go a little bit higher, at least like 180. You can go farther. Uh, just keep in mind that if your radio is on your belt or something and you're, you accidentally begin to transmit, um, this is a safety feature to keep you from embarrassing yourself, essentially. Uh, next are the display modes. Um, and A and B corresponds to the A frequency on your actual screen of your walkie-talkie or your handy-talkie. So you've got the top levels A and the bottom levels B. And you can tell the radio if you want to see the channel number, so like the memory number that you're on, so like 22 for example. Uh, you can select name if you want this name here to show up, the K7RST for example. Um, or you can select frequency if you just want the actual frequency to display on the screen. So I personally like seeing the call signs. That's how I recognize my towers. I don't really remember them by frequency. That's kind of difficult for me to do anyways. So I leave these set to name. Uh, the standby LED color, I have mine set to orange. This is totally personal, uh, whatever you guys want to do. Um, but the standby LED color is just what the backlight color is when the walkie is just on. Um, for that five seconds that we have it set to, you can make it blue, orange, or purple. Uh, I find that orange is easier on the eyes, so that's why I have that set there. Uh, the receiving color, so the screen's going to change to purple when it's receiving a signal. And the transmit color, so the screen will turn blue. Uh, when I'm transmitting or pressing the press to talk button. I personally like to have this set to off um, just so that I can divert as much power from the battery as possible to the transmitter. Uh, that way it's not leaching some of that potential energy to the backlighting. And the Roger beep, just keep this disabled. 
Um, that's the con confirmation tone when you let go of your press to talk button. It'll transmit a beep and out of respect to other hams and amateur operators, um, you know, we, we respectfully keep this off as it's not necessary. Uh, most repeaters have their own tone anyways. Um, the advanced settings, the Vox sensitivity, so this is voice activation, so you don't have to press your press to talk button. It'll automatically detect when you're talking and activate. Obviously, leave this off unless you want to potentially have, you know, an embarrassing or private conversation broadcasted um, because you didn't know your, your radio was on, so we're going to want to leave this off. Um, dual watch. Uh, will actually monitor the A and B frequency at the same time. So if somebody comes on on the B frequency, you'll still hear them. And if somebody comes on to your A set frequency, um, obviously you'll hear one or the other. A is the priority. So if somebody's talking on channel B and then somebody starts talking on channel A, channel A will come on over channel B. So that's what dual watch does. It just allows the, the radio to monitor both A and B at the same time. Uh, the dual watch transmit priority. Um, so you can either set this, let me see, dual watch transmit priority. Actually, I'm not 100% on this one. I believe it's if you have a single press to talk, like a shoulder walkie. Um, I believe that this tells the radio which side you want it to go to if there's only one button, um, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, the alarm mode, uh, you're going to want to keep this set to sight. Uh, most Beofings, if you press the alarm button or the panic button, there's like a little siren that goes off, and if this is on sight, then it's only going to send that siren through the speaker on your radio. You're only going to hear it locally. Uh, if it's on one of these others, I believe it will broadcast over the antenna, so we don't want to do that. Um, voice is for the menus, so as you're navigating, you know, um, there's an actual voice that will tell you what menu option you're on. I think the voices are a little wild, so I just turn those off. Uh, scan resume. You have three options here. Um, the first one, second one, and third one, I, I always mix these up because it's T-O-C-O-S-E as you can see here. Um, but I know how they work. Um, one of them, when you press scan, when it comes across a, a signal, it'll just stop scanning and that'll be it. The other one, when you press scan, it'll detect a frequency and it'll just hold it there for like two or three seconds and then it'll keep scanning again. And then the last one, it's like it'll hold it there. So if you press scan and it comes across an open frequency where somebody's talking, it'll stay there until they stop talking. Now again, I, I always mix these little ones up, but I know that I have it set to CO and that's the one that will hold. So if it comes across a frequency where somebody's talking, it will stay there and it won't continue scanning until they stop. When they stop talking, it'll resume scanning again. Uh, the busy channel lockout, if somebody's talking on a frequency already and then you go to key up and they're already talking, it won't allow you to transmit. Um, this is iffy. It, it works some of the time, I noticed. So don't just solely rely on this. So if you're using simplex or something, actually listen to the static on the monitor frequency to make sure that, you know, that frequency is free and available. Uh, the automatic key lock, um, when you turn on your radio, it will lock all of the keys. So you can't press menu or one, two, three, four, whatever. All the keys are locked out except for the press to talk buttons. Uh, broadcast FM radio, this lets you listen to the standard FM radio, um, you know, like your local radio stations. Uh, squelch tail eliminate, we can leave these set to their defaults, um, but essentially it's for the cutoff when you, when you stop talking or when somebody else stops talking, just leave these at their defaults, it's fine how they are. Um, reset in the menus will actually give you the option on the handy talkie to do a hard reset. 
you can remove that option if you don't want somebody or a younger person, for example, to accidentally wipe everything out. You can disable that. Uh, same thing with all menus. You can disable the menus entirely if needed. Uh, VFO MR switching. So this allows you to actually switch between VFO or MR. Uh, you can lock it out. So if you only want somebody to use three specific frequencies, you can lock out the VFO so that they can't change stuff. And then the single press to talk will only allow you to use the A frequency. Uh, the tone burst frequency, you can leave that set to its default. Moving along, the power on message, you can type whatever you'd like here. The amount of characters you have is limited to the amount of characters available on the screen of the handy talkie. I put my call sign in here, so if my walkie is lost or stolen, every time that they turn on that walkie talkie, it's gonna display this message. Um, Obviously, if they had chirp, they could erase all this information, but, you know, it's just my little failsafe. Or, you know, if somebody, if I'm at an event and I lose it, they can identify who it belongs to. And that's just, you know, the power on message. We want it just set to message. Don't set it to full. And then the VFO or I'm sorry, the VHF, upper limit, lower limits, along with the UHF, what this does... Um, when you're in VFO mode on your walkie-talkie, legally, the walkie-talkie is only licensed to operate within these specs. If you modify these, you know, you can get into some big trouble. So, to avoid any legal issues at all, stay within your whatever band plan for where you live at. So... What these numbers are referring to are the frequencies in megahertz. So, for example, if I set this radio to transmit up to 900 megahertz, uh, we would be violating several rules and laws. So, don't mess with these unless you are a commercial, programmed, licensed person, in which case you're probably not going to be watching this video. So, please, I urge you, leave this stuff where it's at. Um, we're just going to move along here. Like I said, if you want to set a message, do that, but just leave the rest of the stuff alone. Uh, the work mode, this is if you were to set up your radio for commercial use. So we are going to skip over this. Um, the radio that I have and the licensing that I have is not for commercial use, so none of this information pertains to me. Um, if anything, if you really want to look here, the VFO powers... You can set these all to high if you want the radio to just default to high power every time it gets turned on. Other than that, nothing in here is really useful for the uh, amateur radio operator. Um, let me just double check, make sure I'm not missing anything though. Yeah, we can, we can leave most of this where it's at. Uh, the FM radio preset, so when you switch your radio over to FM broadcast receive you can set it to your favorite radio station uh, whatever it may be your local radio station so that every time you activate the FM radio it goes to this station the DTMF settings leave these how they are um, you shouldn't modify these unless you're having issues with repeaters decoding your DTMF but this should not happen you should never have to get into this so Again, just leave all the stuff where it's at. You don't really need to worry about it. And then last but not least, the service settings are for specific squelch operations that, again, do not pertain to anything that the everyday user is going to need. If you want to know more about the advanced stuff, um, there are other videos available. But realistically, if you're an amateur radio operator or a ham, whatever, um, you're not going to need that extra stuff. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, don't forget that when you have everything set and everything's changed again in your menu settings or your memory settings, you always want to go to radio and upload that information to your radio. All right, I hope that was helpful to you guys. And if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to get back to them as soon as possible, or even make a follow-up video in regards to one of the frequent questions I receive. Uh, and again, if you guys are interested in this and I'm doing all right, let me know that. 
Uh, if not, that's fine too. All feedback is appreciated. Uh, but definitely hit the subscribe button if you want more videos. If not, whatever. I'm not worried about it. But this way I get some idea of whether or not I'm being useful to you guys. So please let me know uh, any questions or anything. You can always email me as well. Um, that's ke8avo at gmail.com, kilo echo 8, alpha victor oscar at gmail.com. But the most direct way is just through YouTube. So hopefully we'll see you guys in the future. 73.